Hi there, everybody. This is the Book of Unwritten Tales 2, a tongue-in-cheek homage to role-playing games and the fantasy world we all love. But it's not an RPG. It's a point-and-click adventure because... Well, well, because... We're here with uh, Jan Tyson, and he, we speak about Unwritten Tales 2, the new adventure. So final, finally, the story goes on with the uh, um, cute little characters. Uh, can you tell us something about the story of this, this uh, new game? Yeah, sure. Um, the Book of Unwritten Tales 2 um, takes place two years after the events in the first game. And you again play the four main characters of the game. So uh, Wilbur, the little gnome mage, um, Evo, the elfin princess, Nate, the pirate, and the critter, this furry uh, companion of Nate's. And um, there, was this, there was a game in between where this little guy was missing. Wh why? Um, we made uh, the first book of Unwritten Tales was very successful, um, very high regarded, and um, the, the publisher asked us to, to make something else with it, and we did some some sort of um, you know add-on. So this was not the the whole second game, and this time we said, okay, now we want to make a really big proper second part of the game. So this uh, other one was just like an add-on. Um. What is what is new in this game? Have you some new gameplay mechanics or um, stuff like that? Um, we, um, when it comes to, to puzzle design and stuff like that, we really um, uh, didn't change too much because uh, the the first one um, is r a lot of people really like the first one, so um, we ha didn't have the feeling that we should change too much there. And also for other stuff like. Um, uh, you know, playtime and so on. We we said no. This should be like the first game, and it should be a really big, massive game. And so basically, it's it's like the first game, but bigger, and then uh, with new technology, better graphics, and stuff like that. So it's kind of an old school adventure, right? It's it's uh, really old school. It's like Monkey Island, D uh, Day of the Tentacle, or Discworld stuff like that. Time of the Sorcerer. It's really lots of puzzles, lots of items. Um, um, expo exploration stuff like that, and no interactive movie or something like that. And you had a you had a successful Kickstarter for that. Um, so this, though there was a lot of people who are interested in these uh, these kinds of games. What do you think is the reason for that? I think I'm not sure about it why it was so successful, but I think uh, a lot of people liked the first game, and it was uh, for them, you know, an opportunity to to be part of, of um, the, the development uh, development of the, se uh, the second game. We basically um, said the people uh, said to the, the to the backers, the game comes out no matter what. So this is not about give us the money so we can make the game, but if you give uh, give us money, we could do stuff we usually can't do. Um, optional puzzles, outfits for the characters, orchestral soundtrack, gr um, graphical stuff we would like to do, and all, all kinds of stuff. And uh, basically, um, the people gave us $170,000 or so, and so we could make the game even bigger and even, uh, yeah, even cooler. Um, we talk, it was on Kickstarter, and you said you want to publish this on uh, a kind of episode, so you get one chapter every, um, every month. Yeah, the game, um, the full game is uh, will be released um, early next year. So there will be boxed versions and the full game and whatever everybody expects. But at the same time, we're doing a Steam early access um, where people can buy, you know, the first chapter, uh, the the whole game, and then they get the first chapter in September, then October, November, December, the the next chapters, and then early next year, the the full game is there. Um, Obviously, people don't have to do that. It's just it's r optional. Uh, people who backed us on Kickstarter have the uh, the option to get this stuff for free if they want. But um, yeah, it's just a opportunity to get the game earlier if you just can't wait any longer. <laughs> uh, what do you think about these kind of? Obviously, you, you like it. And if not, you wouldn't use it. But these kind of that you get early access to a game and. Um, so I asked myself, okay, what is the release date? When the first version of the first chapter was arriving, when the game coming as a box, or when the, uh, it's available for download? So what do you think about all these possibilities? Well, um, it depends on the game. Um, for an adventure game, which is you know divided into chapters anyway, it's it's um, an opportunity to say, um, basically say, okay, we are finished with the first chapter, 
if you want it, here it is. And now we're finished with the uh, second chapter, here it is. Um, so um, the, it's not for us this typical, um, like it's not like an alpha test or something like that. The game is almost finished, it's almost um, the, the release version. Obviously, if we get feedback and people say, okay, here's a bug or here's something um, you could improve, something like that. We still can do that because um, we haven't done all the voice recordings, for example, for the whole game, but uh, for the only for the first three chapters at this moment. And we'll do the last voice recordings end of this year. So if people find, for example, a puzzle too hard or something like that, we still could change that and fix it a little bit. But the, the version the people will get with the Steam Early Access is a 99% final version of the game. And uh, talking about adve adventures and uh, about adventures in general, you um, this is a very classical, typical, traditional adventure. Um, do you have plans to experiment with other kind of types of adventures as well? Yeah, we are we are thinking about that, but it's um, for us it's a bit, little bit again about the what kind of game you want to make and, and the people who want to play this game. I think it would be not a good idea to mess around with Book of Hundred Tales because people liked it the way it is and it's it's just you know a, a matter of okay let's give them more and let's give them a, a new story and something new characters and stuff like that and it's not um, about trying to, to rein, reinvent the wheel. Um, but for a new IP um, we're definitely thinking about uh, stuff we could do with you know a little bit different um, controls or different gameplay and, and stuff like that. Are there games where you think, oh, this is a very good approach? Um, well, there were a couple of games that are kind of, you know, in between the, the, the genres. It's not an adventure, it's not an RPG, or it's not an adventure, not an action adventure, something like that. Uh, for us personally, uh, personally, it's, it's interesting um, or something we would like to do is something between an adventure game, classic point and click adventure game and something like a classic survival horror game. So um, think about a, a mixture between Alone in the Dark and, and Black Mirror or something like that. Thank you for the interview. Uh, the game is coming out pretty soon actually and uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to meet all these people and the fee.